Hey there. Today I want to walk you through how to make a audio loadout for a map, a custom map in Mini Metro. Recently we released a version of Mini Metro for Steam Workshop that allows users to create their own maps. And one element of that is making custom audio for those cities. And up until this point, there's sort of a default way that you could connect pre-existing audio loadouts that are built into the game to new cities. But I want to go through the process of making uh, audio from scratch. And so I created a, I created a guide, a toolkit and a guide um, that's available now. It's, it's available on GitHub. And basically, it just it, it goes through <clears throat> all the steps and a lot of the uh, properties of the system that you can mess with. Uh, but I'm going to actually go through it in person uh, and show you how this works and, and show you the, the tools a little bit and how they can help to kind of put this all together. So the first step is to, uh, you know, if you look at the workshop guide, it'll show you places that you can actually find maps. Um, you could obviously create your own maps, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I want to use a pre-existing a pre-existing map, and then I will edit the audio from that. So if I pop into Steam real quick. So the first step is to grab some kind of map. Um, so I grabbed this map, Vienna, as an example. And then uh, there's a couple of ways that maps can show up on your computer. The way that I'm accessing them is through uh, the Steam folder. And there's a workshop folder that has content for different games. Um, each game has some sort of like a numeric code. And uh, within that, each map has a numeric code. So I went ahead and I, I pre-found this Vienna map, which is, which is this folder right here. Now, uh, if we go to the guide, um, It'll lay out that you know the first step for doing this is to grab grab this repository, which I, which I have here, and then you're going to take the if you're using uh, Visual Visual Studio Code, which is what uh, I set this up with. You don't have to use Visual Studio Code to do this. Obviously, you can you can use any text editor, um, but I did I did build this uh, thing called a schema, a JSON schema, and this it's like a rule set and it it's designed to help you make sure that you're putting together the json for the system in the right way and so to 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 get to get going with this all you have to do is grab the json c schema file and the code works space file if you're using visual studio code you just copy them into the into the map folder where you're working and then once you do that you can just double click on this and uh, it will open up the project in Visual Studio Code. So you can see that <clears throat> there's this city.json file. And this is this is where the the city instructions are put together. Um, what you, what you'll find generally, you're going to find this property in here. Or, or you need to add it. It's called audio loadout ID. And this will, you have to specify what audio loadout you want to point to. So right out of the bat, you can point to lots of different uh, maps, the audio from maps that are in the game already, like Montreal or London would be an example. Um, but in, in our case, what we're going to do is we're going to make uh, we're going to make a new full, uh, new file, and um, so the way it works is 
it looks for an audio.json file within that directory, and if it finds it, um, then it will add it to the system. So I'm going to copy this basic uh, template for it. And um, so already you'll see that the, the JSON schema is, is complaining because it's missing certain, um, <laughs> we're missing certain properties. The first thing you want to do is you want to name, you want to name your, you want to give your JSON file an ID. So we're going to use Vienna since we're dealing with the city of Vienna. And then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to change this to Vienna. Now, yeah, you'll notice that it's already complaining. It's saying we're missing property harmonies. So this is one of the required properties. Uh, there's information about all the properties in here, but to kind of get right down to brass tacks, I've included a example of the, I've included examples of cities, and I've also included the base example, which is basically the the parent file that has all of the properties that drive the, the audio system. So I'm just going to copy, I'm going to copy the base example file in here, and I'm also going to grab an example city. I'll grab London just so we can look. Um, so if you look at the base city file, it's got a bunch of stuff in it. Um, it has this thing called a harmony template, which is not an, it's not a working, this is not a working, uh, system. And also this file, you know, it's just an example file, but it, it's pretty much identical to what's in the game. But the idea here is that it gives you a sense of the structure for how to build out a harmony sequence, but actually that's why I copied London over. So you can see an example of you know, one file that's that's already up and running, ready to go. And so this has a couple of different sections. It has this constants section, and this contains lots of different kinds of properties that drive different elements of the system. These are essentially, these are values that are inserted into different parts of the, um, of the system. And there's a harmonies, there's a harmonies dictionary, and this is where information about how the harmonic progressions in the game work, how you move from note to note, how you change the harmony from week to week. So in this example in London, the weeks array has, it has two dictionaries in it, and basically by default it will smooth through these dictionaries one at a time. So week zero, uh, week one, but uh, because we're dealing with computer science, it's it's week zero. Uh, this is week zero. This is this is week one. And then the next, you know, week two, it'll loop back around essentially, and it will use this information to generate uh, musical choices in, in the system. OK. So I'm just going to jump right into it. So for that, I'm going to I'm going to hop back to Vienna. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to create a harmonies dictionary. Now you could just copy this over. Uh, that's fine. But in, in, in VS Code, there's a um, it uses the schema to to do some nice autocomplete stuff. So I'm going to build out a harmony dictionary. Oops. There we go. <clears throat> so this is still giving me errors because it's missing properties that it needs. It needs a weeks property. It needs an assignment property. And of course, uh, so weeks, oops, weeks property. And each week has a will have a dictionary in it. And this. It'll tell you what you need. So it's you need a sequence property and a base property. Um, sequences. This is an array. Um, 
This is an array of nodes, essentially. So you can just throw some nodes in here. I'll come back to this. And then you need you need a base sequence, which is the base notes that it uses. Uh, these are just single. Oops, these are just single letters for that. Uh, there's also this screens property, which is if you want certain chords to be triggered on screens, uh, like uh, game over screen. Um, I believe new asset is a, is a screen type. Yeah, new asset is also an option. So in this in this context, you would put put a note, and then you'd put um, you'd have more specifically notes uh, within the range within the full octave range. After that, um, and uh, it's important to note that the the octave range is limited. So if I put something like C one, it won't it won't let me. Uh, it'll and it, it'll show you what the the range is. It's uh, C two to B five. Those are the notes that are available. Okay, we're still missing an assignments property. <clears throat> so what the assignments property is, basically, it's talking about the lines in a in a level. So this city, uh, this city, Vienna. If you look at a screenshot. It has six lines, so we know what we're dealing with. We're dealing with six lines. So by default, you could just put in that, and then I'll just say, uh, "Oh, right." So what this means essentially is, if you notice, the sequences array is actually it's actually nested. So this is a two D array. So you can you can have multiple sequences in here. Like I could have, I could have. Uh, A C major chord, and then I can have another one that's a something else that might rub or be interesting, like a like an F major chord. Um, now this this array is zero, and this array is one. So if I wanted if I wanted the first three lines to use this sequence, I keep them at zero. If I want the second three lines to use this sequence, I would set these to one. As an example. Okay, so now this will this should work uh, as a basic starting point. But before I actually go into the game and play this, um, I want to test. I want to start coming up with some preliminary harmonic ideas. I'll show you how I tended to do this when I was designing the the music for the game. Um, I would usually do it at the piano, but since I'm at my computer, I thought it might be fun to do it with a synth. So real quickly, I can build, I'll build like a little, I'll build a sound that is like a, it's like a imitation of the sounds in, in Mini Metro. So it's kind of a square, squarish wave. And it's got kind of a soft attack. Something like that. And then I'll just um, make the panning random. Cool. So, first thing I'll do is think about an initial, an initial sound. Maybe that, since I happen to play it. And then my dot, it'll give me the, the note numbers. So that's D, E, F, G, C. D, F, G, C. One thing about the octaves, <clears throat> The ones that are being displayed by my DAW logic are actually an octave down from what the system recognizes. So this note, uh, so this is D2 in logic, my DAW, and this is D2 in the game. 
Oops. Yeah, so it's down an octave. So we'll use D. We'll we'll use D three. This will be C four because it's the next octave. I'm gonna delete this for now. Keep it simple. Just use a single sequence. I'm gonna change the bass note to D so that it matches this chord. The the uh, the bass notes sound. They sound down here. That's usually where they sound. So, um, same thing for the game over. I'll just give it a maybe like a minor seven chord or something. Maybe like a minor nine. Maybe a minor major. <laughs> Get a little jazzy with it. Uh, so that'd be. EFA. It's a C sharp. Oh, so all the enharmonic, all the uh, sharps and flats, it's all sharps in the system. So if you're thinking about it in flats, you just have to convert it. So if you're thinking about a B flat, you're just using it. Use a A sharp. Um, it's a C sharp four, and then a C four. So right off the bat, so right off the bat, we should have some harmony going. If I if I load into the game, you should hear this. Um, what we one thing to keep in mind with the bass example. Oh, okay. So by default, it doesn't transpose your keys. Um, we'll, we'll come back to that later. But uh, so. Yeah, at this point, I'll just um, hop into, I'll hop into the game, and uh, we'll we'll give this a shot. Let's make sure the file's there. We've set it, we've set it in the city file to Vienna. Our ID is Vienna, so yeah, this should this should work. Give it a shot. There you go, those are the same notes. So if I play along, you can hear that they're the same notes. So we're we're already uh, well on our way here. That's that's sort of the that's sort of the, the very beginning of laying out the harmony. Um, we can get into a lot of the other stuff that you can do. Um, in addition to this harmony section, if you just in the in the in the root level of the dictionary. Uh, if you hit, hit apostrophe, I'll give you some other things that you can put in. So you can you can throw down the constants object, which is going to have, I mean, if, you, if you look at an example like London, uh, you'll see that there's a bunch of constant options. If I pop up, you can see a bunch of them here. There's quite a few. Uh, a lot of them have to do with rhythm. Um, some of them have to do with passengers and what they do, or chords. There's some debug type things um, like like uh, you can you can you can add a metronome if you're sort of workshopping some rhythm ideas. This can be useful for that. Um, so let's start with rhythms. Let's start with rhythms. It's a good place to start. <clears throat> so. Yeah, so this is a, it's an array of pulse length options for uh, line loop, which is what what the system is called that generates the repeating note patterns in the game. So these numbers, so if I throw in 12, that's a whole note by default. And the reason that that is a whole note by default is because of the line loop pulse. This is the default line loop pulse. It's a 12. 
So what this means is 12 subdivisions per hour hand on the clock in the game. And that fires about every 0.8 seconds. Um, so you can start kind of thinking about da, 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 da. something like that. That's kind of the base, the base rhythm of the system. So we'll go back to our JSON file. So we'll do something simple. We'll we'll have whole notes, uh, which are basic. We're more like quarter notes based on the pulse of things. It's more like a quarter note, honestly. But for simplicity's sake, let's let's assume it's a really fast tempo and it's a whole note. We'll do we'll do whole notes. We'll do halves, and we'll do. We'll do uh, triplets. So this will be, the 12 will be da, 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 da. Six will be da, 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 da. And the four will be da, 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 da. And maybe, maybe we'll add a nine too, which will be da, 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 da. We'll get a little bit of cross rhythms going. Now, one of the other things we can set up are steps. Um, I'm not going to go into this too much, but basically the idea is that you can control where in the beat these rhythms start. So, for instance, steps whole. Here's, here's one for the, this is for the whole note, which in this case is the 12. The 12 is, the, is, a, is a whole note. Um, oops. So this is just saying a whole note can start on the downbeat on uh, the first, the uh, the second quarter note, the second whole note triplet. Can it can happen on the midpoint, the second half note? Um, it can happen on the third, the third whole note triplet, or the yeah, or the fourth quarter note as an example. So we could simplify this maybe and just say uh, whole notes can happen on how about any any quarter note. And in the spirit of wanting you to hear that maybe we'll do maybe we'll do whole notes. Yeah we'll just do that. Something simple. You can also add swing. That is an option. Um, there's a bunch of options for controlling the rhythm of the appearance uh, and behaviors of passengers, uh, how fast they embark, how fast they appear. One of the really unusual things about the audio system in Mini Metro is that actually some of these parameters will actually change. They will change the simulation, the gameplay simulation. So you want to keep that in mind when you're messing with the um, the rhythm of peep specifically for the most part peep peep behaviors we can add some pitch variation stuff uh, we can change fade in times transposition I'll add a couple more of these just to make it interesting before we test it again Fade in times, um, it's the time in seconds that the samples fade in, so the pulsing sounds, the, the musical, the line loop sounds. Fade in times is the amount of, it's the amount of uh, fade in for those sounds. And it's a, it's a four, it's a four number array. Uh, and these, these numbers represent uh, pause, when you're pausing from regular speed, regular speed, when you're pausing from fast forward and fast forward. So what can be interesting is very, you know, making variations based on going from slow to fast or fast to slow. Um, for instance, we can make things we can make things blurrier um, as we get faster, uh, which is which will make the rhythms less coherent as the game gets faster. That's one possibility. 
there's many many possibilities with that type of with uh, that that property another thing that I'll throw in is uh, transpositions oops so this will give you options for uh, note changes key changes and these numbers are relative values so zero is going to be C uh, negative 3 is going to be A sharp and you can go anywhere from negative 12 to positive 12. Uh, one thing to keep in mind with this is that because the sample set is limited to C2 to B5 if you're close to the boundaries it'll it'll transpose those notes up or down an octave so that it fits but we can we can throw in a couple and then just just uh, that are close something like this and that, that'll give us five different key possibilities. That'll give us C, C sharp, D, um, B, and A sharp. We could even just get rid of C completely, and then we won't have, we will never use C. If you're feeling a little uh, fancy. Uh, yeah, that's a good general, uh, just as kind of a primer on on these constant values. Um, let's see, what else can I show? If we look at London, there's also a train engine, so there's different there's different there's different train engine sounds. By default it uses all of them. There's actually there's a seventh one. Uh, it's the Shinkansen, which is generally not used except for the actual Shinkansen trains in, in the um, in the Japan level in the original game. I don't remember off the top of my head which city it was. I think it's Osaka. Uh, but you could you could theoretically use those. Um, yeah. Let's see. I'll add something fun. There is, there are some levels that have a kick drum in them. Oops. There are some levels that have a kick drum in them. Uh, Berlin is an example. And in this case, there's some special, there's some special stuff that has to be added in order for that to work. Um, there's this other section called modules, which essentially allows you to create new modules or to modify pre-existing ones. So in this Berlin file, uh, we're using these modules to reference these peeps, which is a name for passengers. When, when a circle passenger appears, we want them, we're overriding the step value to be zero, which is the downbeat, or triangle two. Um, but I want to focus on this beat. Now you should be able to get this information from the from the JSON. Uh, I, yeah. it should tell you the stuff that you need. Here's, here's something cool: fade in length, which is the fade in length. It tells you the number of pulses uh, to wait for. Oh, it's the number of pulses that you fade in through. So if you want to start, say you want to start a map with no kick drum, and then after 16 or 8 master pulses, it fades in. So I'll set this to 8 so that we can we can hear it in practice. Um, yeah, this needs, so here's, here's a required property filter. Some of these are just required and need to be copied over. I'll just copy these. Simplicity's sake. Here's some rhythms that we can use. We can also set the pulse here individually. So if we don't want to use 12, we want to use something else, you can do that here. There are some cities where, for instance, the the pulses are very unusual. An example of a city that has a really unusual pulse is Paris. Oops. Uh, you see the line loop pulse of this city is 420, which is quite high. The reason for this is to find, to get common denominators to do 
quintuplets and septuplets. So that's so if you're if you're feeling adventurous, you can kind of you can calculate what pulse you would need in order to get rhythms that will divide by five or by seven. If you look at the step, so say 840, that's a double. If you look at the step values, there's a lot of them. And this is just saying where where in the beat can we actually trigger this, this rhythm? If you trigger it at 60, that is, I think that's, uh, yeah, that's 1 7th. Uh, this is 1 6th. You know, 420, that's one fifth, and so on. So if you're feeling adventurous, you can do stuff like that. But for now, we'll just do a simple, we'll keep it simple. Use the same pulse that we're using uh, everywhere. And we can set the starting week index, which week we want to start playing the sound and fading it in, if we're fading it in at all. Um, I will do it immediately. Um, you can set rhythms independently, depending on whether or not you're the players in fast forward mode, which is cool. So in this case, these rhythms are Some of them are this, like if I, if I do this, then these are basically the same. Yeah, by default it doubles them. So if I had them like this, whole notes and, and half notes, when it fast forwarded, it would take the new, the new tempo, which is faster, and it would still play whole notes and half notes. Yeah. You can get into really sort of sophisticated ideas with the sequences. Uh, because of the way that the system works, where it's it's always shift, it's always moving through this pattern. So four four notes is generally not going to be enough to be interesting. Uh, you're you're going to want to have longer sequences, multiple weeks, stuff like that. Now, because we have six lines. Uh, we, the thing that I would do is think about six of these playing simultaneously because that's what it will, like in this case, you'll hear D3, F3, G3, C4. If there's, if there's six lines, then you would hear D3 and F3 again. You'd hear them doubled. So instead, what I might think about is how can I, how can I set these notes up so that they'll be interesting six at a time? So I might add maybe something like that. I would add a D and an E4. Another thing to keep in mind is that depending on how many lines are currently active, you'll only be hearing, you know, some of these at a time. So if there's only two, if there's only two lines active, you know, it could be D and F, D, and F, D3 and F3. And then, oops, sorry. And then when you update, it would go to F, you know, F3 and G3. Or if there were three, then you'd think about, think about this. So you get these sort of like mini versions of the, the harmony that you've laid out. So it can get really complicated really quickly. <laughs> so it, it helps to try to find something that is going to be effective without being overly complicated, where you, you can't quite you can't quite capture all the possibilities in the design, or you can't quite think about all of them. If there's too many, if the possibility space is too large, then there's there's going to be blind spots in the design. So it's better to find something interesting that's, I think, uh, somewhat concise. 
Um, but for a case like this, you know, one one example of a design that I would often use is having a string of these that moves through different sounds. So let's let's think about let's add six more, and then we'll have we'll have like a looping sequence that will that should always sound good. So right now we have. Sort of an example of what it might sound like, right? That's six. That's six pitches, and then it, at some point, we're going to move to this next pitch, and this pitch, the first one, is no longer going to be sounding, and we're going to be focusing on these six. So the question is, what should, what should this sound be? So. This could be the next the next string of six. Now we're sort of moving we're moving into different harmonic territory and it starts to sound like other chords. That's our first B. So now we have how many how many more of these do we need? We need four more. And then what we have to do is figure out how to get back around too and make sure that that works as well because these sequences loop. So the next, um, the next sequence that we'll want to figure out is this one, C, D, E, E. first sharp here, G sharp, move into some new, some new territory, some non-diatonic territory. The trick will be getting back around. Um, this around here is where you have to start thinking about when this wraps around and we're, we're going back to D3. Um, you know, what is that going to sound like? So I would start thinking about that now probably. B3, B3, G3, three, un, three unidentified notes that we haven't figured out yet, and then a D. So we may not want this diminished sound, but it'll depend on what these next three notes are, whether or not we can bridge that gap effectively. C sharp here, the C sharp four, because I think I can get it. I can maybe work it into getting back to this D three, but I'm not entirely sure yet. This approach is definitely a lot of trial and error in my experience. 
Um, it's good to have just to kind of be alone and just just kind of work at it <laughs> until it until it makes sense. That's kind of at least that's how I've tended to try to do it. Seems, sounds nice to me. Uh, okay, so let's let's give this a shot. Let's work. We're gonna work all the way through it and see see if it works out. So I'll move the cursor based on where I am. So this is so this is starting in D three. where it gets tricky when we're looping we're starting to introduce notes from the beginning again and make sure that they they're going to work That's different. <laughs> yeah, so we have our we have our first rub here really. We've got a minor and a major. Uh, we've got a D sort of a D minor major kind of vibe going on. And the question would be whether or not that's something that we actually want. And if not, uh, we should keep going and see if there's any other issues because that's the only issue Then I can be a little bit more surgical about how I'm gonna, how I'm gonna fix that. So there's this this note continues to cause issues. This G sharp, uh, sorry F sharp. So I might experiment with a different, try a different note here. Um, we have this. We want to go back to here just to make sure that we're. here instead of that sharp three and then we can figure out how we're going to go after that
I'm thinking about these notes that are coming back around. G, C, D, F. How am I, you know, thinking about how am I gonna make that work? I think the safest thing to do would be to throw in another D. And then it has sort of a mix, mixolydian kind of quality to it. That should work. It's maybe not the most exciting way to come back around, but it should it should work at least. Let's see. other rub here so uh, venturing out into other keys uh, at your own peril I would say especially in this example where I'm trying to come back around right away might uh, it might be better to let go of this particular idea and, and stay within the key that might just make just make the make our lives a little easier for the purposes of this example I'll go up here, I'll go up to A4, and we'll keep it in more of a minor tonality. Too. It's a, uh, it's a bit macabre, but uh, it'll it'll do the job. Before. Uh, it's pretty out there, but interesting. I think I think that works fine. too many notes really close to each other so yeah this even something as simple as this can take a while and sometimes it's just that you you set yourself up in the wrong way and maybe go back and start again maybe use a shorter sequence maybe change the design I'm gonna I'm gonna take out these notes so I would probably go back to that and I would work on this a little bit more um, But I hope that this video has been informative. Um, I will. I'll play. I'll play a little bit of this just so that you can hear what we did.
you can hear the kick drums coming already. Everything right now is firing on the, the whole notes. Now you can hear one of them has shifted off. That's the step, the step feature. And that just, it just quantizes to the nearest, whenever you change a line, it quantizes to the nearest step that's available. So you can hear now that the rhythm has changed as well. Uh, I believe the rhythm changes when you've updated the least recently updated line. So if I update all three lines, and then the one that I updated least recently, then it will change again. So in this case, if I change this orange line, it should it should update. No, I was wrong. <laughs> But yeah, that's, that's the basics of how to build your own audio loadout for Mini Metro. I hope it was interesting, and uh, thanks for watching.